also too, I just want to say, um, to piggyback off what he said, is that did you do that all by yourself? All right, see, that's so another thing that's that another, another thing is having help to do that, because you might not have that time to with sit the, there with yourself with yourself and exactly. yourself and <laughs> exactly. you take all the time in the world, dog. You exactly. do it all night, that's how I told you. So that's, that goes back to what you talk about establishing a label. You have somebody that's working with you, and your, which will be considered with marketing, right? So you have your marketing person, he's there all day on that computer, you know, when you get a friend or someone or somebody who's willing to be behind you to sit there on that computer all day. So in other words, all I gotta do is just get each and every single one of y'all number right here and I'm straight. <laughs> like people cost money. So straight, right? But like he said, you know, having a label is letters of organization, you know, it's it's articles of organization, letters of incorporation, it's relationships, it's you know, our department marketing, department promotions, department touring department. It's it's for real, you know, it's like he said, everybody's running around, I got a label. You know, where's your office? You know, where do you record it? Who you work with? What producers know you? So I mean, make sure that, that you're dealing with people that got their, their stuff together. Like you said, you gotta have a tax ID number at least. You can't cut checks without that. Without a doubt. Any more questions? Any more questions? Okay. This question is for all you guys. Um, as an artist, um, if you have the talent, what does an A and R, um, a publicist, and an editor of a magazine look for besides the talent? The three biggest things I want to hear, like all you guys. You have the talent. How do you look? <laughs> for magazines, they look for. That's just exactly what I was saying as far as the cover. You have, let's see, nineteen thousand hip hop artists that are hot. Then you have, let's see, let me give the best example of September. September is a crazy month for big A-list artists. You have Beyonce, you have Christina Aguilera, and you have Janet Jackson and Justin Timberlake coming out the same month. Now, all of them are high profile, all of them are A-list. Why is this artist more beneficial on my cover than this artist? That's when, again, he's talking about marketing, making sure you're going to the right magazine that will properly market you. You know what I'm saying? Justin Timberlake's not going to go to Vibe, because Vibe is not... He's been on the cover of Vibe, but that's not his core. That's not where he's going to beg for a cover. So as a publicist and as a person in the media, such as himself, he's going to say, what artist is best for my cover at the time? Who's going to do best for my publication? And that's what I'm looking for in my pitch story. How am I going to convince that publication that my artist supersedes this artist for this cover or this feature or this placement? What makes this music better? So I mean, it's really just coming on time and it's being prepared what she was telling you. You can have it out there, but how are you marketing it? Everyone's music is out, but Beyonce is the one that opened BET Awards. Beyonce is the one that has her song on the radio first. That meant that her marketing people, her team, got their stuff out quicker, which meant they were able to go to that publication quicker than me and bid for that cover, which is why that cover's gone. So timing is everything. If you're not on time, then you're not gonna get there. And don't be upset, but you missed your timing, which is where she said cycles earlier, if you come at the wrong cycle, it might not be that you are a bad artist, you're just at the wrong cycle in the wrong time. You might have to wait for the next cycle. Don't get discouraged, you just have to wait. So I know I lost that cover. So does that mean in a corporate mindset, if I have an artist like Maya, I might push her to January, and not because she's not talented, not because she's not prepared, because her visibility won't be what it could have been. So that's what you have to really say, when is the best time for me to maximize my visibility, and that's when I'm gonna go to my editor and say, hey, Who's coming out in January? Oh, nobody? Who do you have on the cover? Oh, nobody? Well, this is who you consider. And that's a long process. That's six months. That's a year. That's really making sure your campaign and your marketing strategy is on, is on point. And that's what they look for for my, my particular part. Timing is everything. Have all your tools ready. When you're going to go out there, have your tools ready. Have your kit, everything. Be prepared. Who got it? Yeah, like some people. You know what I'm saying? They say, they say you're looking for the look, like what we say, looking for your swagger, or whatever. You might be the hottest person on your block. You might be the hottest person in your city or whatever. But you have to, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, they look at it as a business. And it's like, can you make me money? Like, you know, so I'm going to be real blunt about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can be doing your thing and be the hottest in whatever show you're doing, come in first place, all that. But can you make me money? You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's why you see, like, artists on TV that you don't think that are so good, but you know what I'm saying, they still get played.
know what I'm saying? Because they're already selling, you know what I'm saying, 100, 200,000 units, already making money. That's why they get these deals, because it's like, okay, if you're selling 200,000, you put a big distributor behind him, boom. He's gonna sell the 500,000 of gold platinum or double platinum with that big backing behind him. So it's like, the overall result is can you make me money? I mean, as an A&R, and, and like I said, at my label, everything is very concentrated. I personally work with every artist that I sign. So I don't sign two of anything. Um, I have a rock act, I have an R&B group, I have a solo R&B men, I have an R&B solo female. I haven't signed a hip hop artist because I haven't heard anything that as an a and I would consider special. You know, everybody is pretty much doing the same thing, but it's the same that you've heard, I know, shopping deals. You have to be enough alike what's going on, but enough different. You know, it needs to be more like what's going on, but different. You know, what's, what's different about you? But they want you to be, you know, like what's going on. And it, it's marketability. And like, like they said, marketability is, is a, a term that we use as A&Rs to be safe and not get in trouble. But that is your look, you know, your build, your body style, everything that we can give Alicia to work with. You know, we can't send this somebody and you got two teeth and, you know, like, she's like, she's like, damn, we can't put him on the cover, you know, like, put him on the back, you know? I mean, it's like, you gotta, you gotta look at the whole picture, you know, is he street credible? You know, is he a good look, like, T.I. wins because T.I. is a good looking guy who's got street credibility. You don't find that, that's rare, he's special. Then that's what we look for, you have to be special. You know, the, the fat girl at the Baptist Church don't get the record deal no more. And that's just reality. You know, we didn't make it that way. That's just business. You know, she doesn't get the deal anymore. But the fat dude has the record. He made, he made. Ruben studded brick. Oh, so I mean, hard. And I mean, that dude can Gerald actually. Gerald Laverne selling records no more. Exactly. So. That's not winning. What's winning now is your ushers, your neos, your, you know. Um, but he's always been mentored. Yeah, you know, it's, yo, it's like, you know, these dudes aren't, you know, Beauty queens, but they're good looking dudes. Chris Brown's a good looking kid. Well, Biggie wasn't a good looking but Biggie was special. Exactly. And, and that's it's the difference also between a hip hop artist. You know, a hip hop artist, you got a little more room to play with. You know, 50, 50's not a beautiful guy, but his body, he got his body crazy. See, with a guy, it's different things you can work with. With a girl, it's a little different. Yes, girls. Um, girls, and I guess everyone's not going to look like Beyonce, we understand that, and that's something I was talking to a dear friend of mine the other day. You think of someone like Fantasia, and I'm not going to say that she's not a pretty girl, but she's not necessarily Beyonce. Therefore, you have to think about different stories and different ways to market her. And my biggest example, and I will leave this alone, is something like the BT Awards. If she's not desirable, to most women, Jamie Foxx is desirable, not necessarily to me, but he is desirable. So if Jamie Foxx kisses Fantasia, that creates press. So you have to think of different things that are going to create press for your particular artist. So now, if that puts Fantasia in front of 20 magazines, which it did, if it put her in in touch because she was kissing Jamie Foxx, you have to be creative about how to make that girl appeal to different audiences. And how much did that cost? How much yeah, did that cost? Yeah, let me, let me, let me. How much did the kiss no, cost? Everybody does not have to be a certain way. I just don't want you guys to think that way, or if your hair doesn't look like this, or whatever. Just figure out what your press idea and what your visual is going to be 